is officially day two of the British Style Collective and I feel like I've been dragged through a head backwards, everything hurts. But I am here with Alex Hi. and we've just had some breakfast because neither of us have eaten. So, <laughs> so I think we're about to get another Uber and head up to St George's Hall for some more talks before Carnival. We have reached St George's Hall. It looks gorgeous. So I'm gonna take you inside with Alex and we'll see some of the talks. I'm honest, I grew up in Australia with a mother who really didn't care at all about fashion. She's much more interested in the horses and the dogs. And I never really had that guidance it, from you know externally or at home and I, it was years later when I also um, grew up with being very very paranoid and self-conscious about my legs you know, like, you know one day wearing a short skirt and thinking this is all right you know your legs are all right until a homeless man across the street went chicken legs across the street like this so I thought well maybe I am right so so I sort of like hid in baggy clothes for a very long time and it was, I had to go to an event, and I asked one of the fashion team on the magazine I worked with at the time, oh God, please help me, help me. And she got out this skin-tight um, Dolce & Gabbana black dress that had like corseting, and every night she's like, there's no way I'm gonna look awful in that. And I put it on, and I just, I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror, I couldn't believe how I felt. I got compliments all night on this dress, that, and that was, so I would have been in my 20s and went, wow, this is, that was, it was like I was trying on being a different person, but of course it was me, and it was just, you know, I, I realised what the power of an amazing dress. I don't ever feel like power dressing for me means the 80s suit, so it, for me it's just colour makes me feel confident. And to anyone here who maybe doesn't know, how, I mean, how do you wear colour? Because I think some people can be quite intimidated by it. I don't know what, it's just, I'm just so drawn to it, so I, you know, it's probably, a, a nicely cut pair of cropped trousers, but they're probably like egg yellow, and then you know, I might wear that with a red or a blue top. You know, I kind of I just like being a bit mad with that. I've got a hot pink Hillary esque pantsuit that my husband hates. Oh, that's so, so funny. But, uh, you know, anything he just he doesn't like the I like to have those clothes that people like see in a crowd and go, Oh, well, where'd you get that? When my husband hates any of that sort of thing. It was funny because I um, saw Jo and her daughter and her husband yesterday and I said to her husband, it's so nice to meet you because I love Jo's hashtag, if you don't follow it, you must, it's hashtag clothes my husband hates. And so I said to him, it's so nice to meet you, but you know, Mr. Clothes my husband hates me as well. Oh my God. He hates my clothes, but he hates the hashtag even more. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he didn't look delighted by it. purposely rebel though, don't you? That's what I love. Against him. Well, I'm, it's got to a point now because it's, it's, people like it and I like it and I feel like he, you know, there are times when I put on a colourful jumpsuit and he'd just go, I'm not giving you a quip and then just leave the room. In a band, you obviously, you are you, like you're not playing a, a character, you are you, yourself on stage, so the only thing you've got to hide behind is your outfit, so, you know, it's quite nice to have something bold that, you know, makes a statement. And travelling with what, did you do lots of costume changes, a big sort of entourage of luggage and stylists? How did that work? We loved costume changes, of course. Um, and we did have a fairly big entourage, just because there's five girls, and obviously we usually had, for each tour, we would have five to six outfits. Obviously they need, you know, to be prepared every day, and costume changes are like less than a minute long, so everything has to be really carefully thought through, as you know, like, to make sure that it actually works the stage. I think our stage outfits were by far the most daring of all the girls allowed looks. I don't think even our video outfits were as brave as our stage outfits. Like some of the things we wore on stage, I almost had a heart attack when I saw them at first. <laughs> like, can I actually put that on? Um, but I guess as the years went by, I grew in confidence. And there's something about safety in numbers. 
you know, if you're a group, a group of girls and you're all kind of going for it, you kind of feel a bit braver. Uh, I saw a gap in the market to kind of, uh, sweets are sexy. Sweets <laughs> are sexy. sexy. <laughs> Trust me, they're super sexy. <laughs> Um, but I sort of gave them up that I wanted to uh, make something which, make, it, make sweets which weren't aimed at just kids, you know, farm animals and those kind of things in the packaging. I wanted to make it cool again. I wanted to do something that was completely different, that wasn't like your usual ones you were getting from your grandmother or whatever. It was something funkier. Um, and I just had that drive and passion. Also, I was really bad at being told what to do at school. I was really bad at everything I was really bad at. Not given authority, so I knew I had to do something stay, for myself. Stay at school, kids. Stay, stay at school. school. Stay at school. Uh, but I knew I had to do something for myself, and I knew it had to be something I loved, and something I was interested in, and sweets were those, that thing. But we look for people who have passion, who have drive, who have desire, and who, who come with something that they are going to bring to the table. When, you know, if you go to a, if you're looking for jobs, you're going to different uh, businesses and trying to find a place to go. Go in with you know question what they're doing, question you know their tactics. See if you 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 actually have a passion to change their business. So we look for people at Candykins who come with ideas themselves, someone who is really passionate about the brand itself and feel that they have ideas that can change it. That's what we like because we're a real team there, and we also we, we love a young team because. The older I get, the uncooler I get. Have you heard all the new words that people say? I just don't know them anymore. Don't drive me down with you, buddy. I'm trying to be down with the kids. So, so we need people out there. I, 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 I get that. I know all the cool words. <laughs> you know all the cool words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just all of them, not any in particular. Just all of them. Okay, Jamie Lang, I have yeah. actually got an impromptu quick fire round. Okay, go. Okay. Ten questions, answer as wait. fast as possible. <clears throat> Sour watermelon or sweet pineapple? Sour watermelon. Winter or summer? Summer. Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram. Sweet or sour? Sour. Jamie's happy hour or private parts? Oh, I mean that's a par, they're both incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> um, blonde or brunette? Uh, mousy. <gasps> running, <laughs> running or boxing? Uh, boxing. Boobs or bum? Bum. Acting or directing? Directing. Strictly Come Dancing or Love Island? Love Island. <laughs> <laughs>very very long time since I last spoke to you guys I feel like because I vlogged so much yesterday which is Friday I feel like today I've barely picked up the camera and um, so I'm not sure how long this vlog will be they're all still going to be individual days for the British Style Collective but I had an amazing day at the talks this morning I ended up I was quite gutted I ended up missing the Henry Holland talk because I went in to L1 to pay a check-in and then I went to Argos and Vodafone because I needed to get a new sim card Ooh. I needed to get a new sim card for this Alcatel phone I won this Alcatel phone in a giveaway on Instagram with the British Style Collective and I had no idea what I was going to do with it because it was literally 
right after I just bought my new iPhone 7 Plus on my new contract for two years and I was debating giving it to someone. I couldn't think of anyone that wanted nor needed a phone um, so I've decided to keep it myself and what I think I'm actually going to do is because the Alcatel phone actually takes micro SD cards um, as well as having some internal storage it means you can take and store as many pictures as you want and you don't have to delete I can just buy a new SD card so if I've got pictures on there like for instance I might have a big picture taking kind of session or I might take kind of loads of pictures at an event edit them all but not necessarily want to get rid of them because I might at some point want to use it particularly ones that are kind of more neutral and are not just event focused if that makes sense so like say for instance if I went to I don't know a restaurant for a drink launch I'd obviously have loads of pictures of drinks but then I'd also always like have pictures of the restaurant and things as well um so I like to keep photos like that to kind of bank them um so I'm what I'm going to start doing is I've got another sim card in here so that I can use this while I'm out for blogging, social media, um, all things like that. I can use it for my blog emails while I'm out and I can have my personal phone as just my personal phone. And weirdly, I'm actually starting to get asked a lot more for my mobile number with things to do with my blog. And obviously, I don't like giving my personal phone out because I work full time and the type of work I do sometimes if something happens or say like if I go on bank and um, they might call me last minute type of thing to say you're needed or whatever and um, so I can need to have my phone on me and kind of on all, all times type of thing whereas I like the idea that if anyone needs to contact me regarding my blog or social media or whatever I can have this phone all the contact goes through this phone and I can switch it off at the end of the day because I found having my social media and everything on my personal phone I will literally stay up till like 10 11 o'clock scrolling through my phone planning tweets whatever and at one of the talks yesterday they talked about being sociable and getting off our phones and getting off the online world and going offline and actually having a life basically so that kind of spurred this decision i'm gonna really reschedule kind of my life if that makes sense um so i kind of want to dedicate maybe one or two days a week because i only work three days a week so that gives me four days to get shit done basically so i think probably not this coming week because i'm going to be quite knackered after this weekend but the week after I think I'm gonna start doing my three shifts a week and then two other days I will ha like solely dedicate to blogging YouTubing days so that like those days so those days I get up nice and early I don't lie in and I have my breakfast I get dressed and I get straight to work and I have a plan like a to-do list of everything I need to get done on those days as if it were a real job because I find myself slacking a lot lately and like I will have my my actual phone my iPhone just kind of out on the side and obviously group chats and if it happens and you get distracted and I get distracted very easily if I'm doing something on a computer like in work I can like focus on what I'm doing because there's not as many distractions whereas if I'm sat at home on my computer working on my blog, which yes, you could say is another full-time job. Um, and if you ask any other blogger, it, it feels like a full-time job sometimes. I feel like you don't concentrate as much. I'm going to dedicate two days a week to that just to get everything sorted for like the next week. So all my blog posts, videos, if I need to plan any videos, schedule any tweets do any emails I obviously still pick up my emails when I'm in work on breaks I know it's really bad to do to flip from like one job to the next but if I get a spare minute on my break I do keep an eye on my emails on my blog so I still I'm not gonna be like swamped in emails on them two days hopefully and then the other two days of the week so that'll be five days a week I'm working and then the other two days 
I am going to have as like my weekend off and I don't do anything on my computer that's related to blogging or YouTube. I kind of enjoy my time off. It's now 20 to 11. I'm exhausted. Oh, I forgot to tell you about Carnival. So Carnival was amazing. As always, Katie and Sammy do such a fabulous job. I think I've got a couple of clips and maybe some pictures, so I'll put them in. But um, obviously because I'm kind of with friends and what have you, we get chatting and I genuinely forget to take my camera out or have it out on the side and I'll forget to vlog or take pictures. Um, so I'm not sure how much footage I have got of that, but some of it I wasn't actually able to film so now i can say it now because the event's over but as part of the event they had like a special secret event that they weren't really telling well they didn't tell anyone about before the day and at about four o'clock so i was there from about one half one ish and from four o'clock we actually went to the breakout room in Liverpool and I think I'm going to write a blog post on it because I actually really, really enjoyed myself and it's actually a really fun thing to go and do in Liverpool and like I thought I was rubbish at things like the breakout room. Like Katie and Sammy are like the queens of breakout rooms, like go and look at their blogs, they do. I think they've done like every one in the North West. And then Sam and her partner Dave are amazing at breakout rooms. They've been doing loads and loads and loads. And I basically never thought I had the brains to do them because it takes a certain type of thinking. It's really logical thinking. And sometimes I think of things in different ways. I actually managed to break out. We did the classified breakout room, which actually is supposed to be really, really good. And it is. Um, it was me, Kia and Abby. We all did it together. Neither of us, well, none of us, had ever done a breakout room. So we were in for a treat and we actually weren't the last ones, which I'm pretty impressed with. We thought we were going to be the last ones because we broke out with three minutes and 50 seconds, I think it was, um, to spare. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to the last day of the British Star Collective. I can't believe it's already over. We've been so excited. Like, I got my emails in March about the British Star Collective and it's already practically over. I cannot believe it. So, I'm kind of gutted about that. But, we'll enjoy it. So, I shall see you tomorrow for day three. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more vlogs, particularly day three of the British Star Collective because there's going to be some interesting talks and interesting things going on and I'm getting more confident with filming outside guys woo but I shall see you next time bye guys mm -hmm.